A few minutes ago, President Donald Trump has signed four executive orders for the economic relief. Uh, I know there are so many people who are here in the U.S. We are waiting for the update about the second stimulus and unemployment benefits and so many other things which are related to stimulus. These four executive orders which have been signed today are different from what many people who are not in the U.S. or even who are in the U.S. are waiting to hear about merit-based immigration executive order which will come probably by the end of this month or beginning of next month because that uh, uh, merit-based immigration must come before the first week of October so that it can give the uh, decision whether the lottery will be there or will be modified and all other things will be at that particular moment. But these four executive orders are related for economic relief. And I want to explain what are these four economic relief uh, executive orders and how are they going to affect you. But before I continue on, on this one, I want to give some prior information about the stimulus and why there is executive order and whether or not the president has mandate on providing these exec executive orders. Welcome everyone, this is Ernest Bonfas Makulilo EBM and I welcome you to my YouTube EBM scholars. In case today is your first time, please Welcome to the EBM Scholars family and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel but also share these videos with others. And as I said, this is some breaking news. I know that there, there will be some so many information about this one. So before I continue, I have to put a disclaimer. This video is not about the political whether uh, Democrats or Republican, who is a good guy, who is a bad guy, who has good policies, who has bad policies. This is about the reality and the situation I'm going to analyze. In case for those who do not know, my background, I have a degree in political science and I'm very good in doing political analysis. And in all politics in America, I usually... Uh, register myself as independent voter. I don't register as Democrats. I don't register as Republican. I look good on both sides and I rely on those kind of areas. I don't to affiliate myself, oh, I'm just from this party and just go like blindly and accepting everything. So I believe I'll be able to provide you what does that mean. We all know that we have been waiting for this, uh, for the stimulus, uh, second stimulus. Uh, there was already passed in the House of Representatives. After being passed from the House of Representatives, which was the three point something trillion, has to go to the Senate. And for those who do not know, uh, House of Representatives majority, uh, majority is under Democrats, and in Senate, majority is Republican. So that is a very interesting kind of combination. So for that situation. Uh, in, when it goes to Senate, it cannot be able to pass easily. Why? Because majority are Republican. So within the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the act which has been, or what I can simply say, the proposal which was passed by the House of Representatives, it had so many things which are going to be outlined there. According to Republican, they are saying there are few things which are not related to COVID or are not related to economic relief. And the, but no matter what, there have been so much discussion in the first few weeks ago, a uh, negotiation between the Democratic, Republican, and White House. But they haven't come to the agreement. And the deadline was yesterday. Yesterday on August 7th was the deadline. Why was it a deadline? It's because both House of Representatives and Senate are going for the recess from Monday, which is August 10th, until September 8, after the Labor Day, which is September 7. So the Labor Day weekend, they come back on uh, September 8, when that's, the recess uh, is, is going to be over. So for that case, if they haven't reached agreement, which they didn't reach agreement, for that case, we could be just in the limbo. You cannot be getting to the stimulus until when they come back. From this moment, President Trump decided to go as a solo and make the executive order. So there will be, at the end, there are legality whether the president is allowed to make this executive order or not. But I'm going ahead and giving you what are these four executive orders which have been signed by President Donald Trump. Number one of this executive order 
is about the extension of unemployment benefit or unemployment supplement. You all know that uh, before uh, before the ending of the un un unemployment uh, supplement, basically people get the benefit from the state and also federal government because of the economic problem of the coronavirus from March up to the end of September, they provided extra 600 per month, I mean per week, which makes 2,400 depending on how much you make. So you, you are getting the federal benefit, but also you are supposed to get the state benefit. So majority of people, they got 4,000 up to 5,000 depending on the state and depending on how much you collect un unemployment in your home state. So that's number one. And this is what caused a very big controversy. Why do Democrats want the same 600 per week to be extended until January? Based on the proposal they passed in the House of Representatives, Republicans are saying, if you continue to give 600 per, per week, 2,400, 2,400 per month, plus the same amount for the, for the, for the, for the, for the state, someone will make it 4,000 to 5,000 how are you going to convince that person to go back to work? Myself, I will not go back to work if I'm going to get a job of 3,000 while I get over 4,000 to stay at home. So that is the big challenge between Democrats and Republicans. So the Republican came with a proposal of 200. Democrats refused. They say it must go 600. They came later with 400. Uh, Democrats has refused. So President Trump has made the extension of unemployment supplement to a reduced rate of 400. Hundred dollar per week. There are some explanation there how much uh, federal can be able to cover and how much uh, the state government can be able to cover that one. But overall, now because up, up to, it has passed one week already since uh, the expiring uh, expiration of the unemployment, as I said, uh, 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 unemployment. Supplement from the federal expired on July 31st. So it has passed one week. People have never been paid yet. So with this executive order, so there will be extension until the end of the year or unless otherwise when they reach that deal. So people will be getting 400 per week. That's number one, which has been signed. So for those who are receiving unemployment will continue to receive from uh, September, uh, from August 1st until when the new... Uh, uh, deals is going to be rich on the second stimulus. The second part is the payroll tax. This has been very controversial because some Republicans accept, some Republicans don't, some Democrats accept, some they don't. So, President has no power to go and approve everything. So, what he decided to do, he went to do the uh, unemployment, I mean, uh, to, to do a payroll tax. So, what does this mean by the payroll tax? By the payroll tax, as I said, this has been, President Trump has been pushing this one for a week. So this one, uh, is the executive order is going to provide a payroll tax holiday through December 31st, 2020. And it shall be available with respect to uh, uh, an employee, whatever, all those kind of things. What does that make? What does that mean? Uh, what does that, how does that help you with the, uh, how much are you going to get and everything? So let me put it in a simple way on calculator. So basically, uh, a normal person, let's say on the federal way on uh, payroll tax, uh, they are going to take 0 0.765, uh, 0 0.765, uh, that is the amount you are going to, 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 to get uh, as a percentage for every 1,000. So for that case, in every 1,000 you make, you are going to get... Uh, you are going to get 75, around 75, 76 dollar. So in every 1,000, you are getting uh, 76 dollar back. So instead of the portion where the employee was contributing to the payroll, the employee will not be able to do that. So if you are making 5,000 uh, in a month, that means you will times 76 dollar uh, times uh, 5,000, I mean, whatever, uh, times five, I mean, uh, you are going to find like, so 5,000, each one, each, 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 each 1,000 is 76 dollar. So if you get 5,000, you are going to get average nearby 400 as a paycheck on that one will be coming back to you. And this one is going to be, there is a, uh, a limit maximum of 100,000. If you are making more than 100,000, you are not going to get more.
So that is another thing which will be there. Uh, another point, uh, executive order, which came through was uh, the student loan. At the beginning of the year, they put uh, zero uh, percent uh, on the student loan. Uh, that means uh, students are not allowed, I mean, the student loan uh, will, will, will be having, uh, uh, like, you cannot, there, there will be no, they, they waived all the interest. Uh, it was until September. So this one has been extended until December 31st. This extension will be, many people who, especially graduates, will be able to like this one. And the other last part about this, uh, about this, uh, the last part of the, uh, of, of the executive order today is uh, eviction. Basically, there was eviction under the original stimulus or CARES Act, which, so that one expired July 24th. Uh, July 24th was the last days where renters and home homeowners uh, were in the risk of eviction. So with the exact, this executive order is going to provide relief uh, until the end of the year. So the, 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 uh, this one, people are not be, be going to be evicted. But there is something which people have to understand. With the eviction order to be extended, kind of, uh, uh, so uh, to keep people who are struggling with their homes, whether renting or homeowners, with this one uh, is going to be extended. That means, yes, you will not be evicted. But assume, let's say by July 24th, by that one going to expire, if you haven't paid for your house or, uh, or your rent, you can be evicted. But this one is going to cover, to continue until the end of the year. But again, what happens even at the end of the year while your income is not very stable? So with this situation, uh, with this executive order, is going to provide uh, what we call, uh, that means uh, the executive order also, uh, it says in consultation with the Secretary of the Treasury and Director of uh, and other directors of other departments, they are going to review authorities and the resources in order to prevent eviction and foreclosures for renters and homeowners during this hardship of during the COVID-19. So there will be some sort of uh, relief, like people will be able to apply and get money from government to be able to cover that one. I do not know how determination will be able to be, to be able to be covered. And while I'm talking to this one, already, if you go to the website of the White House, already these executive orders have already been uh, posted there. So I'm going also on this video at the bottom, I'm going to put the link of all these executive orders and what have been covered on those kind of areas. Okay, so one of the other thing people want to, have to, uh, to understand, does the president have mandate? Or is the executive order is part of the law or not? So basically, someone posted like, oh, you know, oh, this executive order is just, just something Congress can come here and just pass a new legislation or something. So according to the law, Unless a future president is coming to resign the executive order, the executive order stands as a law. Congress has no role unless a bill is introduced to the House on which a vote is taken and passed. So that is the, the procedure. If there is no a proper procedure to go to, uh, to the House and pass and then go to the Senate to be voted and passed, executive order stands as a law. Okay, does the president has this power? There are certain areas the president has the power. There are certain areas the president doesn't have power. That's why the president didn't go and say, from now on, I'm going to give the total uh, unemployment or like, let's say the total uh, stimulus package uh, I'm going to approve. Cannot be able to do that. Has no that mandate to go to provide one trillion or two trillion on those kind of areas. But the few areas within this bill, president can be able to do like what executive order, what power has. Will people go to court on this one? Probably yes. There are people either on the Democratic side, they will go to the court to go and block this kind of executive order. They have the right and they can do that. But for the political reason, if you do that, so are you going to the court to say that, okay, I'm going to object people to get the money for unemployment. Or you are going to go to the court to object students not to get extension of not paying or to have zero interest until December. What are you going to the court to object? Are you going to object to the process or to the results? So this is kind of political game, both on Republican or Trump 
versus Democrats. So for him, because he's in power, for the deal between Democrats and Republicans to not to materialize before uh, the recess, it is bad for the administration. It is bad for politics, uh, especially uh, when you are coming for the general election. So for him, whether it's for political reason or for his way of really helping people with coming with his executive orders, he gets out of the blame that I've done something, but some other way they don't want you to succeed or they don't want you to get this money. So this is another pressure also for Democrats and Republicans to come on the table and go to the agreement. So either they, they have to decide to come back from the recess very, very soon to go through, to, to go to approve this one, or they have to wait until after the recess so that we can be able to get the stimulus. So we are waiting also for other parts of the stimulus. And the reason what made the, this process of the stimulus to not be complete, one among the big area is the issue of uh, the matter of unemployment benefit, how much should be extended, uh, to, be, uh, to be added or extended for how long, that has been big. But there are so many parts of that big bill which was passed by the House, some of those are not related directly to the COVID. That's why there are so many things people want to, okay, we don't see the need. For instance, the issue about we have to give money or stimulus to, an, uh, to uh, illegal immigrants. That doesn't make sense because any person, whether international student, whether a foreigner, whatever you are in America, but you have social security, you pay the tax, you will get your benefit. But why and uh, someone is illegal, doesn't work, why should they people get the money? So those are the things which are critical uh, into this kind of uh, debate. Or some other money, like oh, there are some other parts of the bill which was passed, like uh, there are people have to be released from the prison because whatever. Why? How, how does that relate to a stimulus or something like economy wise? So there are all other kind of things. People say let's deal with the immediately things which related to relief at the moment and other uh, things which related other legislations should be taken into other categories. So I don't care which part, but this is more about the political. Both Republican and Democrats uh, need this uh, stimulus so that people can get uh, relief with this uh, COVID, with economic relief, which recovery, which is very, very bad for most of the people, but also for political reasons. Both they need this one so that they can go to the campaign uh, in November and be able to say something. Because if they continue to block this one until the election comes, nothing is done, it is bad for them, both the Democrats and Republicans who are up for the election. So that's what I want to share with you. But if they are not going to stop their recess, we can expect the... Uh, we can expect to get the stimulus, which is 1,200 by the end, uh, by, uh, by the middle of September. That will be more likely, or the end of September. That is the time, because they're coming from recess from September 8. So give them one week or two weeks, they'll be able to finish everything. Then we can be able to get our money uh, from that particular moment. So that is uh, how it is at the moment. Uh, but no matter what, we are, we'll be, because both Democrats and Republicans, they don't, uh, they, they agree on 1,200 uh, as a stimulus people to get that amount. But the only bigger part which they don't agree on this one, and there are a few other things like payroll tax, it was, it was not popular at that time. There are things about, uh, they have been added into the bill, like what kind of tax or about something to be added, to be removed. So all those kind of things, they are part of the big deal. So let's wait and see. But I want to give this a quick update. But after all these kind of updates uh, about these executive orders, before October, before the 1st of October, so probably by the end of this month or beginning of the next month, we are going to have another executive order, the executive order which will be able to, de to, to, to determine whether we are going to have a modified green card lottery or will be the same because the president has already said he's going to provide executive order on merit-based. So once that one comes, either it will go along with it with the Senate uh, Congress uh, to discuss certain few things on that executive order, or I don't know in detail how will that uh, play a big role into the new changes or reforms in the immigration. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.